Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronicos here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at the weekly reset for Destiny on June 16th, 2020. This is going to be the second week of Season of Arrivals and today we're going to be talking about everything that has reset in the week from the Nightfalls to the Crucible to the Menagerie, everything that is significant for the weekly reset. First and foremost for anybody that is doing the Forge thing where you get a lot of Umbral Engrams, what is this guy doing here? Anybody doing the Forge things, they have patched that, or they said that they did do that patch. I have not checked since they said they did it, but they said they did it on Twitter, so apparently we're not able to do that anymore. It just sends you to orbit every time uh, you finish a Forge, so you have to actually manually be there to start the next Forge. <laughs> you should milk, man. <laughs> I, 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 I also feel like there's definitely going to be people who are going to be complaining about this. People complaining about the fact that they have to play the game. Something I did want to mention before getting to the weekly reset. When I first logged in, the means to the end was still on IO. I thought it might move over to Titan. It could be that it actually is on Titan and I logged in too quickly. But that is something that I did want to mention because I do know IO is one of the planets and Titan is another. But actually this is in a different location in the rupture. So probably it's IO this week. Maybe we're going to also do Giant Scar and then move to Titan. I don't know. And I would also like to mention the means means to the end quest is going to be a laborious very menial thing that we do every single week that is linked to a set of triumphs so if you want to get all of the lore and the triumphs and listen to what's going on with the darkness and all the crazy stuff you got to do this every week at least on one character moving on to the regular weekly reset starting up with the nightfall ordeal this week the ordeal will be savathun's song ironically what a lot of this dlc is going to be about is savathun so savathun's song is going to be the big purple shrieker at the very end that drops the duty bound auto rifle this is probably maybe a middling amount of points so to be able to get a 100k probably uh the legend to master rank will give you the 100k and for the regular nightfalls we have inside terminus dropping the long goodbye sniper rifle strange terrain dropping the Bray tech osprey rocket launcher and then finally hollowed lair dropping the mind menders ambition shotgun Quite a popular shotgun, but has been replaced by Felwinter's Lie. The heroic burn for this week will be Void Singe. As for Crucible, the rotating playlist, we got Team Scorch. Everybody got a Scorch Cannon in a team. A lot of fun, definitely very interesting. The other one will be Countdown. Reckoning this week will be the likeness of Oryx. If you want the spare rations, it is an opportunity to get it this week. A note, spare rations is sunsetting at the end of the season, so if you want to use it for anything like Iron Banner, Trials of Cyrus, high-level Nightfalls, and uh, the future raids, you're not going to really be able to to bring it along with you because of the low power but for everything else it's still an incredible weapon and of course reckoning is going to be on solar stage as for escalation protocol this week it will be the Ikelo shotgun that's because last week was all three and next week will be the smg so this is probably going to be the last week i'm going to be talking about escalation protocol because they came out with a new set of weapons a new Ikelo shotgun sniper and smg you're most likely just going to be better off trying to go get those. And on top of that, I still believe the CQC-12 is better than the Ikelo shotgun. So, if you wanted the Ikelo shotgun, it's still a great weapon, but it also is sunsetting. So, this is the last time I'm going to be talking about it. <coughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> The Flashpoint this week will be taking place on IO, so completing the public events, Lost Sectors, and Heroic Adventures to get this done quickly, and I do believe this should count the Contact public event. It is a public event, so you should be able to get both at the same time. Hopefully, whenever Titan comes around uh, for the Flashpoint, we can also do the uh, the public event there. It'll be nice. It'll be nice. I don't know why I said it like that. It'll be nice. As for the Menagerie this week, it will be Hasapiko, the big Minotaur, and the Menagerie is also going to be sporting a Void Singe in the regular mode, and of course for the Heroic mode, we have Extinguish, Iron, Blackout, and Void Singe. And as a question to my viewers, can you please let me know if the Menagerie weapons actually drop with a new Sunset level? Because I've been told by one of my viewers that the Menagerie, including Outstringer, is now dropping from the Menagerie with the new symbol in the corner and the new Sunset. Please let me know if that's the case, because that's awesome. Menagerie's great. That would mean Beloved would be coming through, Outstringer coming through, maybe Arinto coming through, uh, Dust Rock Blues coming through. I don't know, man. It sounds like a lot. That would be coming through. As for the moon, first of all, for the Nightmare Hunts, we have Skolas, we have Omnigal, and we have the Fanatic. I don't remember which of these is the easiest. Uh, usually you want to get Zydron or uh, you want to get uh, Fogoth, but, uh, you know, uh, figure it out, yeah. 
<laughs> on top of that, if I could just mention, there is actually a lot of different powerful and pinnacle gear on the moon, something that I definitely forgot about at first. For example, there's two vendor bounties here that will give you powerful gear. Uh, the Nightmare Hunts has a set of powerful and pinnacles. The Raid has a full set of pinnacles. The uh, Pit of Heresy is three powerfuls and a pinnacle at the end. There is just, uh, of course, there's also exotic quests for uh, laying a strewn of boot. There's a lot on the moon. Just wanted to mention uh, if you forgot about it. As for the Garden of Salvation Challenge leftovers that takes place in the first encounter of the raid, you're not allowed to kill any of these Cyclops that spawn in the Harpy boss's presence. This does not include the Cyclopses that are already there. You can actually kill those. You cannot kill the new ones that spawn in. And even if you've already done this challenge, this is pretty easy. So you'll be able to get an extra pinnacle. And that's what I like to see. Lots and lots of pinnacles. Moving on to Ever versus Inventory. This is adorable. I love how they, they gussy up the ghost, but moving on to Ever versus Inventory, showing off everything that she does have available for the first finisher. We have the Fist of Fury. They don't often sell finishers. That's why they're so expensive. So if you don't have very many, that is an opportunity to get it. We have the Calypso Sparrow. Ooh, I did not think that this was going to be like this. Uh, you know, it might be, a, might be a thumbnail. It's a nice looking Sparrow. We have the uh, Warsat of uh, Rival. We have the Vibrant Medusa. A very nice shader for weapons it definitely colors very nicely some weapons have more of a black and green i would recommend it if you don't have one. Oh no oh they're doing the 2001 space odyssey thing where he's just gonna smack the bones with it yeah he's doing the 2001 space oh pop culture am i right for the other bright dust section god damn i nearly have every single one of these uh, we've got the Mirror Mirror, where you're actually just looking at a mirror view, doing the same thing. You've got the uh, Burnout uh, Vehicle, got Boxer's Dance, got some shells, got some more emotes, got an ornament for the Tractor Cannon. Very bonerific. Got some Ghost Projections, more Ghost Projections, Arrivals, Shaders. Pretty straightforward. I did notice, by the way, there's a lot more Shaders here than there used to be last season, which is very nice. Okay. You know, it almost feels like my name, just Dichronic, feels like such a try-hard name when you have things like this going on. I, I, I feel so out of place. Everybody else is, is picking stupid and fun stuff. And finally, for Hawthorne, let's talk about our weekly raid challenges. First up, for the Last Wish raid, we have Fight Forever. This is going to be taking place during the Morgoth encounter, the big ogre. And in this encounter, do not kill any of the regular taken ogres. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. For the Scourge of the Past raid, we have Hold the Line. This is going to be in the first encounter of the Scourge of the Past raid, and in this encounter, you just have to do everything faster. Just don't let the battery level go below half, and you're doing things quickly, you should be fine. And finally, for Crown of Sorrows, we have Limited Blessing, also in the first encounter of the raid, and in this encounter, only two people can have the buff at one time. So just have two pairs of people, swap the buff between them, and then just have the other TP, have the, whatever. <laughs> cares <laughs> and that's it that is the end of the weekly reset let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions any concerns i'd be more than happy to help you out trying to get into answering the comments apologize has been a little bit uh, absent lately but uh, yeah uh, make sure you check out my live stream i always have every tuesday at 12 p.m pacific time uh, that i do right after my reset as well as the other times i also stream throughout the week so come check us out uh, but we will be playing live getting some powerfuls leveling up our characters getting ourselves to the maximum power ready for those grandmasters in July. But yeah, that's the end of it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Vinay Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.